the 41st pick in the 2023 NFL draft that the Arizona Cardinals were able to secure from the Tennessee Titans, the Cardinals select BJ Ojolari, the outside linebacker out of LSU. And I am Tanitra Batiste. I'm here with our locked on Cardinals guy, Alex Clancy. And this locked on NFL draft coverage is presented by Ultimate Football GM, so you think you can run an NFL franchise well? Visit ultimate-gm.com to play the ultimate NFL GM simulation game and start your dynasty today. Now, whether you talk, Alex, about dynasty or depth, it looks like to me going after a player like BJ Ojolari is ultimately about depth for the Cardinals. This is a guy that being from Louisiana, I kind of know a little bit about him. Of course, we've been looking at Aziz Ojolari. And if your name's Ojolari, you obviously have some technical skills to be the kind of pass rusher that the Cardinals would like to see on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. I mean, this is a home run. Like this is a far cry. This is, I, I talked yesterday about the Arizona Cardinals being the Arizona Cardinals in name only with the new regime. Now there's rational moves trade backs that will benefit the team not only in 2023 but 2024 and grabbing a guy who very well could have gone in the top five picks yeah. of the second round of BJ Ojolari and with the Arizona Cardinals of years past you didn't see a whole lot of big SEC school defenders coming to the Arizona Cardinals they drafted Rashard Lawrence in the fourth round a couple years ago but with the first two rounds that the Arizona Cardinals have been able to pull off, not only securing future draft capital, but getting two impact makers probably from day one in, in, in Paris Johnson and, and BJ Ojolari. This is an absolute, no doubt about it, home run through two rounds for the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, and that's a great point that you make, Alex, because when you think about what the Cardinals are up against in terms of being a scoring defense that was ranked 34, 31st rather in the NFL. It's one of those things where in order to be competitive, you've got to be able to score on both sides of the sides of the ball as well. So it sounds like when I'm listening to you talk, it sounds like you're as excited as maybe Nick Rollis might be about having the opportunity to work with a guy like him along with an Isaiah Simmons and really bring along a young core, but a core that to your point could very well be something to behold for years to come. Yeah. I mean, the thing is like the Cardinals have so many needs everywhere on the roster and the defense is definitely taking a step back, losing uh, Byron Murphy, Zach Allen, JJ Watt to retirement, potentially Buda Baker in a trade, depending on what happens in the rest of the day, the rest of the day today, what the Cardinals desperately need and what they're in the, you know, on the precipice of, of, of building is a culture shift with young, talented players who don't need to be acquired from other teams like Steve Kime did because he couldn't draft. This is how you build a roster organically and starting through the first two, one on uh, uh, both sides of the ball, you know, both offensive uh, offensive and defensive corners have to be happy with one, with what Monty Osford has done so far. Absolutely. Indeed, indeed. So when you look at, as you mentioned, you're looking at the Cardinals really being very strategic about this. And I love what you talked about when you said that, hey, in this instance, what the Cardinals are doing is kind of resetting their philosophy, kind of looking across the entire NFC West and saying, hey, when we look at the Rams, they're kind of in rebuild mode. When we look at the 49ers, they're very, very young in terms of what their talent is. And when you look at the Seahawks, they're being pretty aggressive as well. So now that you're looking and kind of seeing what that philosophy is with the Cardinals, especially in these early rounds, where do you kind of think they're going to shift later rounds? And it's kind of a two-part question for you, Alex. Do you see them, number one, as kind of continuing on the defensive side of the ball or shifting to offense? And then part two of that would be, are we in a space where there's best player available or is this going to be a need situation going throughout the rest of the, the draft? You know, it's interesting with the with the trio of th third round picks that they have, I feel like that they're going to take a center, the best center available to supplant Rodney Hudson, uh, who has moved on. Um, I feel like corner is a desperate need for the Cardinals. Keely Ringo, a hometown guy, if he's there in the 60s, he shouldn't be. And I don't think he's been drafted yet as we speak now. He has not. Like, if if the Cardinals can get a Max Whipler and, and Keely Ringo in two of their three third-round picks, I think when you're looking at the Cardinals, they don't have enough talent to draft for depth right now. They're going to have to draft guys who are going to be day one starters or sometimes potentially in the middle of the season if their season goes awry pretty quickly with Kyler Murray being on the shelf and them just not having a lot of talent on the roster. They probably have the worst talent roster, uh, the worst talent of any roster in the NFL right now, and that's 
hitting rock bottom is what needs to happen in an effort to change. So when you ask about depth, I don't think that this is a depth draft. I think this is a position of need draft, which is every damn position, not named quarterback. <laughs> I absolutely love it, Alex. And yeah, if you're going to compete, and it's so interesting because you have some of those divisions like your NFC West, where it's going to be a tall task and a tall order for you just to get out of the division. So yeah, you literally have to start building and kind of stacking the deck, if you will, and looking at the needs piece there. And yeah, maybe when there's a best player available, you kind of go in that direction again. But it sounds like the Cardinals have a lot in the way of needs in order for them to be able to complete. So for more on the Cardinals draft, you know where to go follow locked on cardinals it's part of the locked on podcast network your team every single day thanks a lot alex for stopping by